Hello everyone, it's Mr. Bueller again. I thought today, as a form of show and tell, I would uh, show you some really neat stained glass windows that are found in this uh, beautiful church here called St. Matthew's Anglican Cathedral. It's the cathedral for the Diocese of Moussigny. And uh, any of you who've been in Timmins or have driven through Timmins it will uh, recognize that uh, beautiful green steeple, I am sure. It's a, a landmark here in Timmins, and uh, the, their stained glass in this church is uh, is wonderful. There's two artists who have built stained glass windows here. One is Yvonne Williams, and the other is Rosemary Kilborn. And these two well-known or famous or important Canadian artists uh, made a very big contribution to the windows in this church. This church is about 110 years old, and we're going to go inside and uh, take a look at the windows. Okay, everyone, our guide today is Nikki Alexander. Do you want to say anything, Nikki, about uh, about yourself? Oh, just say hello to everyone and welcome to St. Matthew's Cathedral. And my name is Nikki. Uh, I belong to this church and I have been living in Timmins for about eight years. And I am a built heritage specialist. So I'm really interested in old buildings and the history of buildings. And I'm also an artist. So I'm really excited to show you, show you these windows uh, that were made by two very famous Canadian artists. Well, welcome to St. Matthew's. The area where we're standing inside this church right now, this is the original part of the building that has been here in Timmins since 1913. So it's actually one of the older buildings in Timmins, although it has been added onto and enlarged over the years. And the windows that we're looking at now, these were done by Yvonne Williams, who's a very well-known Canadian stained glass artist. She died in 1997, but she had a very busy and active studio for almost five decades. Um, she was based in Toronto, and she completed many windows for many churches around southern Ontario. And I think that here in Timmins, we're very lucky to have this collection of artwork the, the way these windows came about was the church, St. Matthew's, became a cathedral in 1961. And in 1968, the congregation raised funds through a memorial fund in order to install the stained glass windows. Previously, the windows were just colored glass, um, but the congregation wanted to make something special. So this is one of the first five windows that Yvonne Williams completed for the church around about 1978-1979. All these windows depict scenes from the life of Jesus. So this one here is showing uh, the baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph and the three, uh, the three kings arriving at the crib. What I've always found interesting about this window is if you see this king on the left, he's wearing a huge feathered headdress, which is quite a departure from traditional depictions of this scene. The other thing that's interesting about Yvonne Williams' work is she, uh, she believed very strongly that the window shouldn't keep the light out, but allow the light to pass through. So because today is a warm day, and this is on the south side, you can see how the sun's coming through the window and it changes um, the, the light and highlights different things. So the artist used to say that depending on the time of day or the time of season, her windows would take on a different appearance or a different life. So this is another one of the original set of five that Yvonne Williams completed. And she entitled this one to the glory of God. And it shows the risen Jesus and the broken tomb below. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting about her work as well is that it really shows how um, stained glass isn't just about putting colored glass together. She actually painted on the windows. Um, when stained glass origin originated during the Gothic period, it was literally, it meant painting on glass. And this is what Yvonne Williams has done here. She's got her colored pieces and then she's used a brush and different tools to paint the glaze onto the glass. And that changes how the light and the detail and how you read the image. 
Once she'd finished painting, this is a vitreous paint, so she would have then put the glass with the paint into a kiln, um, fired it to a very high temperature, so that when it comes out, the paint is bonded with the glass. Wonderful. And if you look down here in the corner, you can see how she used stencils and scratched into the glass to create different effects. This uh, window is in loving memory of Florence McChesney. Wonderful. Thank you. This window here is um, depicting the baptism of Jesus with meeting with St. John. And the dove at the top obviously represents the Holy Spirit coming down. Uh, what I love about the Von Williams windows is how much dynamic movement there is. Um, there's a lot of color expression and you can really feel how the lines are coming down and through the window and, um, and it's all coming together in this one piece. And these two windows are on the north side of the church. So here the light isn't coming through directly, but you can see how they glow with color. And the colors all work together. The blues and the oranges are, are the complementaries. This one here is Behold the Handmaid of the Lord. So this is when uh, the angel Gabriel visits Mary? That's right, yes, okay. when the angel, the Annunciation. Oh, very good, okay. And this is the, the fifth window in the set that Avon Williams did. And this one is called Unto Us, A Child is Born. And it depicts Mary with, with the baby Jesus. And she's very much in the center of the piece. Um, and I've always, uh, there, there is a man up to the left there who may be um, Joseph. So it's, it's the family, the Holy Family. Hi, so we're now further at the back of the church where you would come in. Um, what's interesting about this part of the church is it was originally the sanctuary. Um, as the church grew, it, it flipped over. So now the altar's on the other side. Uh, but the area where we're standing now was originally the sanctuary and you would have entered the church on the side of the So this window here is the last window that never got, uh, it never got, and stained glass was never made for this opening. Um, unfortunately, by the time they got to this one, the congregation didn't have sufficient funds to complete the project. But this is interesting because it gives us an idea of what all the windows would have originally looked like before the stained glass replaced them. So here at the back of the church, we have three windows. These ones were made by Rosemary Kilborn. Uh, Rosemary Kilborn took over the commission from Yvonne Williams in 1980. Um, the reason being was that at that time, Yvonne Williams was, um, she was getting older and frailer and she wasn't very well. So Rosemary Kilborn worked in her studio as an apprentice and she stepped up to take over the commission. What's interesting about Rosemary Kilborn is that she is also an artist in her own right. She was more famous though for her wood carvings. Um, and she also went on to illustrate uh, Barney Mowat's books. So she's another well-known artist in Canadian circles. Uh, this window here is called The Last Supper. And you can see how her style um, differs slightly from the exuberance of Yvonne Williams' original windows, but she uses the same techniques, allowing the light to shine through the glass, uh, using the paint as an effect on top of the color. Uh, this one's quite interesting, it depicts the crucifixion of Jesus, and in original correspondence between Rosemary Kilborn and the church, she actually notes that she, she specifically chose this interesting color of the glass because it, um, to her, was so indicative of, of the flesh and the wounds of Jesus. Um, at the same time, she was worried that maybe it was too, um, too graphic. But it's interesting how it, again, um, that there's a lot of emotion in this piece um, and a lot of different things going on in this very classic composition. 
So this little, um, this window is called Safa for Little Children and it's dedicated to um, Mary Colbert and that family are still very much connected with St. Matthew's Church and there's something very, um, there's something very peaceful and happy about this piece um, when Jesus allowed the children to come to him. Uh, you can see that he's surrounded by the doves, there's a sun shining and it's a very close composition. Let's look at one special part about this glass here. This child here, what can you see? Yeah, so you can see how her face has been painted in quite a lot of detail. She's really resting against Jesus, coming to him for comfort. So I think it's a window that could speak to a lot of people right now. Right. The other thing is how the birds are at their feet. And they've also been painted in a lot of detail. This window is the last window that um, was completed for the church. It was done in 1987, uh, which means it was done uh, pretty much 10 years after the original windows that Ivan Williams did for the church. And this one is entitled Peace Be Still. And it's, it's I find this a very comforting window. It's, it's depicting Jesus um, calming the storm. So at the top, you can see the men and the disciples being tossed in the waves um, on that stormy lake. But below them, Jesus is lifting up and, and, and keeping them safe. This window, Yvonne Williams came back to complete, um, but she needed Rosemary Kilborn's assistance to complete it. And what she tried here was a very new technique in that it's actually a double stained glass window. So instead of just one layer of glass, there's actually another stained glass window behind this, and that's what gives it this almost tissue paper-like effect. This window here is interesting. It's not, it wasn't made by Von Williams or by Rosemary Kilborn, um, but I call it the Northern Window because it's so unique and specific to where we live here in Timmins and Northern Ontario as a whole. Uh, the St. Matthews is the cathedral of the Diocese of Messini, um, cathedral church of the Diocese of Messini. And um, so there's a connection here between where we are in Timmins and the, the natural wildlife, the landscapes of the North. This window is in fact in the position where the original entrance to the church would have been. And I don't know too much about the history, who made it or why it was put here. But it's quite fun to have a look at it and, and see how many animals you can recognize. And at the top above the saint's head, there's some people folding cloth, what looks like what might be a tent. And the saint below is holding a scroll and a pen. So it, you, can, you can make your own ideas or thoughts, stories about what this window should mean to you. Thank you. Well, there it is, my friends. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed looking at some of the images and colors in this church and the windows. Uh, maybe you'll be inspired to... Uh, um, draw some colorful pictures yourself about the life of Jesus or a story in the Bible or something else. It's, uh, pictures are a wonderful way to communicate uh, stories and ideas uh, in sometimes very uh, profound ways. So thank you very much for, for watching this video and peace to you all my friends. Peace.